Hello and welcome to Lesson 5 of Life in Ancient Greece. Today, we will discuss public and private spaces in the classical world. We'll start with what would have been the most public place in any ancient Greek city, the Agora. Agora literally means assembly or gathering place. Agoras were open yet enclosed spaces that were typically located in the center of a city. Agoras would be decorated aesthetically with fountains, statues, flowers, and trees. They were open meeting grounds and many assemblies took place here. You can see on this map of ancient Corinth a few different agoras. Agoras were also the locations of markets and trade, conversation, and entertainment. The agora was the center of daily life and was a crucial part to all ancient Greek civilizations. Here are the remains of the agora in Athens today. On the left, you can see the Temple of Hephaestus, and on the right is the Stoa of Attalos. The second most public place in Athens was perhaps the Nyx. The Athenian Nyx was the center of political issues, discussions, and meetings. This political center was in use from the 5th century to the end of the 4th century BC. The Nyx is located about 500 meters from the Acropolis, which you can see on the hill on the top right, and surrounded by many parks. 20,000 citizens were able to gather on the hill for political forums. However, only 6,000 Athenians were deemed necessary for a conference to begin. Temples were also very public places in ancient Greece. They were popular and frequently found. There was one main purpose of these temples, which was to provide a home for the statues of the gods and goddesses. Sacrifices would be made in these homes for the gods and offerings presented for the god or goddess the temple belonged to. Though there were many public spaces, it's also important to note and learn about the private spaces in Greece. For starters, houses. Ancient homes were generally made from mud bricks and wood and were almost always centered around a courtyard. Wall paintings were very popular forms of interior decor in ancient Greece. They would be painted on wooden boards with a certain type of colored wax. As we know, these materials don't age well. So most wall paintings are either completely faded or have a small hint of color. Sometimes they were painted directly onto walls, sometimes as panels that were larger Sometimes they were painted directly onto walls, sometimes as panels that were later hung on the walls. The paintings would depict stories of gods, goddesses, myths, or even people in the town. A majority of these wall paintings were done for wealthy homes and hung in private. However, if one was completed for the public, it would be hung in a government building. Within their homes, ancient Greeks are known for their reclining couches, in fact, the word recline is a derivative of klein, which was a wooden frame daybed with a raised head like you see here. People, mostly men, would relax and sleep on these during the day and at dinner parties. But proper Greek beds were not dissimilar to modern beds. They would have been raised flat platforms with a mattress and stuffed with straw or hay, not very long lasting hence why we don't have many examples of them today. But as modern as some of their features may seem, perhaps the biggest difference between ancient homes and homes of today is that the ancient Greeks would not have had running water. The Greeks designed sewage systems to carry water away from houses, but no system to bring it in. They would have to travel to a nearby well and fill large containers, probably vases, to return to the house with. The lack of running water made laundry a big chore too. Most people built their homes, if possible, near a fresh water source, such as a river, well, stream, or even a spring. Without access to these sources, people, usually women, 
would have had to fill a large container with water at home. This made laundry very time-consuming, and it remained very time-consuming for thousands of years, right up until the first washing machine was invented in 1851, just 150 years ago. But what clothes were they washing? Ancient Greek men and women both wore a tunic, which was simply like a cloak. The correct fit of the tunic would consist of a heavy fabric that was folded over along the upper edge in order to have the overfold reach the waist. However, if you were wealthy in ancient Greece, your clothing would be made out of richer materials such as silk and linen. We tend to think of the Greeks wearing white, cream, or tanned colors, undyed natural fabrics. But for the wealthy, ancient Greece was a very colorful place. One color in particular was extremely sought after. Greek purple, also known as Venetian purple, was a prestigious color in ancient Greece and showed wealth. The purple dye was secreted by several species of predatory sea snails in the family. In ancient times, extracting this dye involved tens of thousands of snails and substantial labor. And as a result, the dye was highly valued. These colors were therefore associated with the wealthy class. Finally, like us, the Greeks loved their pets. Today, it is fair to say that dogs and cats are the most popular pets to see in a family home. Well, the same thing rang true for the Greeks as these animals were the most common pets in an ancient Greek home. Dogs and cats would have roamed the streets but were also kept as pets and used for hunting. Similarly to ancient times, Present-day Athens is full of street cats and dogs. From soap and clothing to laundry and pets, the ancient Greeks were not so far removed from us. Thank you so much for watching this lesson, and stay tuned for next week's lesson.